In my previous video, that is part 2 of hypertension, we have discussed in detail about the various homeostatic and regulatory mechanisms that play an important role in maintaining and regulating blood pressure. And any alteration or disruption in these homeostatic mechanisms can lead to adverse changes in blood pressure. Numerous factors including genetics, renin angiotensin aldosterone system, sympathetic system, Soil sensitivity, hormonal factors are mainly responsible for the pathogenesis of hypertension. So most of the antihypertensive agents act by decreasing the cardiac output and decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance. So the antihypertensive agents are classified into five groups. The drugs that inhibit the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, drugs that inhibit the sympathetic system, diuretics that decrease the extracellular fluid volume, the calcium channel blockers and the vasodilators. So these are the five major drugs that help in reducing the blood pressure and they reduce blood pressure by decreasing the cardiac output and decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance. So starting off with the drugs that block the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So these include the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, the angiotensin receptor blockers and the renin inhibitor. The figure drawn here shows the functioning of renin angiotensin system. Renin is secreted from the kidney and it converts angiotensinogen from the liver to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 in presence of angiotensin converting enzyme gets converted to angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2 is the main culprit that is responsible for hypertension. So abnormal or excessive activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system leads to increased formation of angiotensin 2. And angiotensin 2 through various actions increase the peripheral vascular resistance, increase the extracellular fluid volume, the cardiac output and increase the blood pressure. So there are drugs that inhibit the angiotensin converting enzyme and decrease the formation of angiotensin 2. So ACA inhibitors by inhibiting the angiotensin converting enzyme decrease the formation of angiotensin 2 and these drugs are captopril, enalapril, lisinopril, ramipril, quinapril. Then there are drugs that antagonize angiotensin 2 action by acting at the receptors they prevent or reduce the action of angiotensin 2 and thereby help in lowering the blood pressure. Some of the angiotensin receptor blockers are losartan, telmisartan, valsartan, candisartan, olmisartan. Later, a drug that inhibits renin decreases the formation of angiotensin 2 and help in lowering the blood pressure. And the drug is aliskirin. The next group of drugs is the drugs that inhibit the sympathetic nervous system or the adrenergic nervous system that controls the alpha and beta receptors. So these include the central sympatholytics, the alpha blockers, the beta blockers and both alpha and beta blockers. Central sympatholytics as the name itself is suggested, they produce the action in the brain. They stimulate the alpha-2 receptors of the brain and reduce the sympathetic outflow, decrease the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine and diminish the action of epinephrine and norepinephrine on blood vessels and heart and thereby help in reducing the peripheral vascular resistance and reducing the cardiac output. So central sympathetic drugs are clonidine and methyl dopa. The next class of drug is alpha blockers. As we know that alpha receptors are of two subtypes, alpha 1 and alpha 2 subtypes. The drugs that are preferred for the treatment of hypertension are selective alpha 1 blockers. As we know that alpha 1 receptors are predominantly present in the smooth muscles of the blood vessels and are responsible for vasoconstriction and increased peripheral vascular resistance. So by blocking the alpha 1 receptors, the peripheral vascular resistance is reduced and 
the blood pressure is decreased. So selective alpha-1 blockers such as prazosin, terazosin, doxazosin are preferred drugs for the treatment of hypertension. The cardioselective beta blockers include atinolol, metoprolol, propranolol which is a non-selective beta blocker which acts on both beta-1 and beta-2 receptors can be used for lowering the blood pressure but the preferred drugs are cardioselective beta blockers. The drugs that are effective and safe for the treatment of hypertension are the cardioselective beta blockers that have predominant action on beta 1 receptors of the heart decreasing the cardiac output and decreasing the blood pressure and thereby acting as antihypertensive agents. The next class of drug is both alpha and beta blockers that reduce action on alpha and beta receptors reducing the peripheral vascular resistance, reducing the cardiac output and the drugs are labetalol and carbidilol. The next group of drugs is diuretics. Diuretics reduce the extracellular fluid volume and decrease the cardiac output and help in lowering the blood pressure. So this happens in the acute phase or in the initial phase. But in long term, it decreases the peripheral vascular resistance by causing hyperpolarization and relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle and by decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance, they cause lowering of blood pressure and helps to maintain blood pressure in the normal range and this is responsible for its antihypertensive effect. Amongst the diuretics, thyroid diuretics are preferred diuretics for the treatment of hypertension. And these drugs are hydrochlorothiazide, clothiazide. Then we have thiazide like diuretics such as metonazone, indapamide, clothalidone that are also widely used for the treatment of hypertension. Aldosterone antagonist is a drug that antagonizes aldosterone action, which is responsible for causing reabsorption of sodium and water and excretion of potassium. So by antagonizing action of aldosterone, there is increased excretion of sodium and water, decrease in extracellular fluid volume and a decrease in blood pressure. So the aldosterone antagonist includes spironolactone and eplerinone. Loop diuretics is another class of diuretics that can be used for the treatment of hypertension, particularly in patients with advanced kidney disease when the GFR falls less than 30 ml per minute in 24 hours. These are also preferred drugs for the treatment of hypertension with edema because they cause large excretion of sodium and water and have rapid onset of action. Thus, loop diuretics such as furosemide, torsemide and bumetanide can also act as antihypertensive agents. The next group of drug is calcium channel blockers. So these drugs by inhibiting the calcium entry reduce the calcium concentration in the vascular smooth muscle causing relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance and decreasing the blood pressure. So the calcium channel blockers are of two types dihydropyridin and non-dihydropyridin. The dihydropyridin class includes nifedipine, amlodipine, phenodipine Nicardipin. These drugs are vasoselective agents. They have selective action on the blood vessels, decrease the peripheral vascular resistance and cause lowering of blood pressure. These drugs are preferred over non-dihydropyridin for the management of hypertension because they have predominant action on the blood vessels with minimal action on cardiac contractility and cardiac conduction. The non-dihydropyridin class includes veropamil and diltiazem. These drugs are equally efficacious for the treatment of hypertension, but they have cardiodepressant property to reduce the cardiac contractility and conduction through the AV node and there is increased risk of bradycardia and AV nodal block. Therefore, the dihydropyridin class of Calcium channel blockers are preferred over non-dihydropyridin class for the management of hypertension. The next group of drug is vasodilators. They have action on the blood vessels, that is the arteries and the veins. By acting on the arteries to reduce the total peripheral vascular resistance and decrease the blood pressure. 
by acting on the veins they reduce the venous return to the heart decrease the end diastolic volume and thereby decrease the cardiac output so vasodilators lower the blood pressure by decreasing the peripheral vascular resistance and reducing the cardiac output the arterial dilators are hydralazine and minoxidil whereas there is a drug that produces action both on the arteries and the veins and the drug is sodium nitroprusside so to sum up the classification of anti hypertensive agents the first group includes the drugs that inhibit the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and these include the ace inhibitors the angiotensin receptor blockers and the renin inhibitors the second group includes the drugs that inhibit the sympathetic system or the adrenergic nervous system and these drugs include the central sympatholytic the alpha blockers beta blockers and drugs that block both alpha and beta receptors then the third group is diuretics which includes the thiazide diuretics loop diuretics and aldosterone antagonists then we have the calcium channel blockers which are of two types the dihydropyridin and the non dihydropyridin class the dihydropyridins which are preferred in the management of hypertension lastly the vasodilators that includes the arterial dilators and both arterial and venous dilators so with this we come to the end of the topic if you find this video useful please like share and subscribe also see my book that is case based learning in pharmacology which is published by cbs publishers and distributors i have also referred to other sources the references are as shown in the screen thank you